You have likely learned what the word continuity or to be continuous for a function means. In grade 11, maybe you talked about whether a function is continuous or not at certain points. We had a pretty limited understanding of what the word continuous meant. Just like we had a limited understanding of what a horizontal asymptote was, you get a simple definition and now you're going to get a more precise definition. Just like grade 11, a horizontal asymptote was line it just got closer to. But our definition allows for it to fluctuate like that. It's leveling off and we use limits. It's going to be the same for uh, continuity here and a uh, function being continuous or not. In grade 11, likely the word continuous for a function meant if you draw something and it's all connected together, right? That's continuous, but something like this is not. Is that what how you talked about in grade 11? No. You've never used the word continuous or not? No. Oh, good, okay. Well, I mean, continuous sounds like it's a pretty self-explanatory term, right? You're going along the road and suddenly it ends, and then there's a piece on the other side over here. Is that road continuous? No, right? There's this break. Uh, whereas if it goes, it continues, right? The word continuous, it's one piece. In grade 11, you, you possibly could have talked about that fact. And you would have said that any of the functions you looked at, unless it went like this, that would be something that's not continuous because there's that break in the graph. We are going to use limits to define continuity here. Okay, there's a picture of a function down below here. And we're going to look at where it's not continuous. I think you should be able to point out pretty easily where it's not continuous. Where is this function not continuous? At 1, okay, it's not at x equals 1 and at x equals, the scale at the bottom is not great, but at x equals 2, okay? It's not continuous at those two points. It has to do with limits, okay? What is the relationship between limits and places where it's continuous? Anywhere else you go, it's continuous because as you approach a point, the value ends up being what you expect it to be, right? As I approach 3, these numbers slid over for some reason, but as you approach 3 from either side, what does it look like it's going to be? What does it look like the value is going to be? You're heading up this line here and it looks like it should be 2, right? And from this side, it looks like it should be 2. And when you get there, it is in fact... Two, right? Whereas if there was a hole here and it was suddenly up here, you're heading there, it looks like it should be two. It looks like it should be two, but then you get there, it's actually something different. Then it's not continuous at that point. If when you get there, it's what you expect it to be, then it's continuous. The only two places on this graph where the value turns out to be not what you expect is at 1 and 2. At 2, if I come from the left or if I come from the right, what does it look like it should be here? It looks like it should be 1. In other words, the limit as you approach as you approach 2 from the right or the left, the limit as you approach 2 of that function is what did you say it was? It's 1. The limit is 1. The function actually is what value, though? But but the function is 2, right? But f at 2 is equal to what? 2. As you get closer, the limit is 1. But the actual function value is 2. Right? As you approach this value here. As you approach, try and color code it here. As you approach 2, okay, as you approach 2, it looks like the number should be 1, but it's actually equal to 2. You're, you're getting closer and closer. Look, I'm heading for 1. Whoops, suddenly I'm way up here, right? Real world things don't happen like that. The one I like to use is the plane landing. Not that I'm going to draw a plane here. How do you draw? Can you draw a stick plane? <laughs> Probably not, eh? What's that? Draw it. Unpause it. Okay, so we need a, we need a, we, we definitely need a clipping of that. Um, clipping of this guy. <laughs> this is high tech stuff. Unfortunately, the trees over there are going to be flying along with the guy. 
and I need this. We need to get it out of that box first. We need to make them small. Okay, here's our guy. Okay, here we go. That was not worth it at all. <laughs> here's the ground. Real things don't work this way, okay? Here's here's his height, right? This is his height as we go. Um, well, I, I guess you can see how high he is here. Uh, what could I do here? I could do... No, we'll do this. If the guy's height as we go, as you uh, as he's flying down here, this is not worth it in the least bit. <laughs> um, here's the guy flying. He's headed down steadily here. His height's getting lower and lower and lower. In reality, there's no functions that jump like that because he gets to the ground. He can't suddenly be up here without having traveled up there, right? There's no way to make a graph like this, this one, where you're suddenly at a point. You instantly time travel up to a a different spot like if we wanted to draw a graph the best we could do is if he could really quickly go up there you know I mean the heights gonna turn back around but uh, there isn't any real things that I can think of certainly that he's there and then instantly he's up here right do you do you understand what I'm saying if there was that would not be a continuous trip right the best we can do in reality is he just suddenly goes up here right that's what's the point of it? Well, because the farther you get in math, you just have to understand theoretical concepts just to prove you can understand them. I think. I mean, it's. I mean, math. Math does go though that somebody comes up with this idea, or it says, "What about this?" And we think about things, and then later on, there's an application of it, right? You you know you can't do square roots of negative numbers. Can't do square root of negative one. But at some point, some mathematician said, let's pretend we can, right? There's no real number that's the square root of negative 1. Let's just pretend that we can. I'm going to call it i, okay? Call it i is the square root of negative 1. It is. It's an imaginary number. You know how you always talk about real numbers? There's, there's another set of numbers called imaginary numbers. It includes all the real numbers, but it also includes things like this. Somebody came up with this idea long ago and people probably said, what's the point of doing this if you can't use it for anything? But then hundreds of years later, I'm no electrical engineer, but I understand there's an application for imaginary numbers if you're an electrical engineer. Often, I mean, at some point somebody said the same thing about negative numbers, right? Somebody said the same thing because at some, at some point all the great minds of the world, like somebody said, what if we could have, like somebody said, well, you can't have less than nothing, right? There's one computer, two computers. You can't have less than one. You can't have less than zero computers or whatever, right? Not that they had computers then, but you can't have less than one, whatever they had at that time, sticks, <laughs> okay? You can't have less than zero sticks. And someone said, what if you could have less than zero sticks? You know, I need some symbols for it here. So how about if, you know, we got all these numbers here. Probably the idea of negative numbers came well before they used the decimal number system, but why don't we just put a line in front of it and say this, and all the great mathematical minds of the world said, you're insane, buddy. You can't have numbers that are less than less than zero. That's that's nonsense, right? But then as you know, as people discuss it and they say, well, no, that makes sense, right? It's that it's not that you have it, you owe one, right? You're worse than zero because even if you got one, you'd have to give it to that other guy, right? So it's worse than zero. Then now we use negative numbers all the time, right? So sometimes the concept has to be invented or thought up and then you think of applications. I'm sure there's maybe, you know, at some point this concept of looking at a function where you have a jump like that. You have, you have functions that jump instantly like that, right? Um, like your bank account, it goes, suddenly they give you the money, right? They don't go one cent. Two cents. Like when they pay you the interest, it changes like that. This is the this is your value. This is the value. So you have you have functions that are discontinuous all the time, right? Which just goes against what I just said. Is you can't have functions like that. But I functions where we could act it out with a cool little plane. So you're right. This is making for a good video, right? This is a great video. Um. Anyways, you. 
you need to be able to express with limits why this is not continuous at this point. The function value is different from the limit. Because if the function value was the same as the limit, you wouldn't have a point up here and that would be filled in, right? Does that make sense? That one's nice because you can see the function value is different than the limit. What about this one? What would this look like? How can we show that it's not continuous here? What's the, what's the function value at that limit? F at 1 is equal to what? 1. On one side it looks like it's continuous, right? But it's, it, it's on the other side. It has to be on both sides. You need a two-sided limit, right? The limit as you approach one of that function, what, what hap what's true there? From the negative side or just two-sided limit, right? From the negative side, what happens with that? Looks like it's zero, right? This, this, not the same. Therefore, not continuous. At x equals 1. It's different on one side. It has to be what you expect it to be. Plane's going in for a landing. You expect it to be on the ground when it gets to the ground. If it's suddenly up in the sky again, not a continuous flight. That is the concept of continuity. If you really understand what limits are, it's almost obvious from when you look at a picture, right? If you really understand, I mean, we get caught up in the notation because we're not totally 100% confident with the notation, but the concept is obvious. If as you're getting close to a point, it ends up being what you expect it to be, it's continuous. If it ends up being something else, not continuous. All right? That's, that's continuity at a point. If I... Uh, if I scroll down here, continuity at a point. So this is this is not saying a function's continuous. This is saying at a given point is something continuous. Continuity at a point. A function is continuous at a point. If the limit as you approach C is the same as, I don't even know why I'm coloring it differently, but if the limit as you get close to C is the same as what actually happens at C. If the behavior as you get close to C, if the behavior okay, as you get close to C, is the same as what's actually happening at C. Okay, the behaviors you get close to C is the same as what actually happens at C. It's at C, not at SEA. <laughs> at C, what, happen what actually happens at C. It just sounded weird for a second there. This is saying behavior close to C. This is saying the value at that point. It says this interior point because if you have some function like this, if you pick a point here, it's oops, it's continuous if there's the value C, right? If this is the function value at C, F of C. If the limit is the same as that, then it's continuous. But if I was to take this now and move it up like that, and then there's a missing value here. Now it's not continuous because the function value is different than the limit. That's it. The reason that there's something separate for endpoints is because you can't have a two-sided limit at an endpoint because there is no two sides. So what it says is at a left endpoint or a right endpoint, at a this is a right endpoint because it's at the right side of the function. You, at a right end point, you can only have a limit coming from the left, right? Does that make sense? That's why it says coming from the left side or the right side, okay? 